live brunch. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Live Brunch. Live Brunch. Live Brunch. Welcome to another episode of Live Brunch with me, Johan Philip, and we're joined by Stephen Dawson, who just finished speaking to us, uh, and Lou Fellingham. And you might be wondering, Yay. why is Lou here? It's because she has won the jacket game Thank this you. morning. That Thank is you. a special jacket, and I, I really like it. I appreciate it. Thank you. I really like it, Johan. Yeah, yeah. Are you well asking for it, are you? If the stock was in generosity, <laughs> maybe we could have had a practical demonstration. Yeah, there is, there is that. Um, Not today. We've just, we are in our relational wisdom series and looking at how we can better relate to people. And the uh, topic this morning was on vulnerability and sharing um, just, I guess, sin and weakness in a community with people at the right, the right people, the right place, the right time, uh, with the right motives, uh, just so that we can... I guess, be free from some of the things that are, are, are plaguing us and, and bothering us. And um, uh, one of the, the things that we are in the middle of doing is small groups. And so I've got a few uh, questions for discussion in small group. We very much believe that uh, church life has worked out best within community. And so we've got a few questions yeah. for you to discuss in your small group. The first one is, what does vulnerability mean to you? Do you see it as in positive or negative? What does vulnerability look like for you? Do you have people you are honest and open with? who would question or challenge you? And then the third question, Christ has enabled us to approach God, to know him deeply. Mm. Are, these things, are there things that are holding you back from experiencing and enjoying this? And so just let's, let's, let's jump into the second question. Uh, what does vulnerability look like for you? Do you have people you are honest and open with who would question or challenge you? Yes, I think the answer is yes, I do. Um, I'm quite an open book. Generally, I'm quite open to sharing what's going on. I'm, I don't really hide much. Um, but also, I think there have been certain things in my life, certain things that I've thought about or, you know, carried in my heart that maybe I wouldn't want to say in public in front of everybody, but I know that I need to let it out and share it with somebody. Um, and so I've got a couple of really good girlfriends. And the key thing for me is they're godly. So they'll come at things from a godly perspective. They know me really well, and I, I feel totally comfortable to tell them all of the terrible stuff that I might be carrying. <laughs> you know, the stuff that I basically need to just say, this is the rubbish that I'm holding right now. And, and sometimes it's not just about them, uh, you know, we used the word rebuke last week. Sometimes it's about them correcting my thinking. So I, we often carry things about ourselves or are thinking about ourselves. And we persuaded ourselves that that's, that's the way. And then you bring it to somebody else and they go, but I don't see that at all, or I, I don't look at it that way at all. And so sometimes that's been really helpful for me as I've shared life with them. So it's about sharing life, really. Um, and so I've got a couple of really good girlfriends and obviously my husband, Nathan, mm. we pretty much chat about everything. We were talking earlier, we were chatting earlier just before we went live about kind of create a, a culture where when you, you, you come in and you share stuff and mm. you kind of expose the stuff that's deep in your heart, stuff that's mm. deeply personal, it being received well. Yeah. Uh, and I know that we've, we, I've shared stuff with you and, um, and we've chatted. And I, and I think one of the, the, the big things that I've, I've really enjoyed about this church and the relationship that we've had, and probably we can touch upon that a bit more, is I didn't feel judged when I, uh, in, a, in an unhelpful way when I shared what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, it wasn't like, hey, this is my problems, and you're like, yeah, high five, God bless you, off you go, you can't change. But it was, we, had, we talked about it, but it, it felt like it was received in a context of love mm -hmm. and in a context of, well, we are, we're here to love you and to help you on your journey. And we were just saying how important that is in church mm. community, that when, when people do share and when, do, when people do talk about stuff that's going on, it's a safe place, a place where you can trust the people with whom you're being vulnerable. Yeah, I think I'm quite passionate about the church being a place uh, where people can just be real. So we all have moments where we have different things that we're working through. And so we want an environment sometimes where we're able to, you know, open the doors and receive. And sometimes we are the ones that are pouring out the, the you know, this stuff that's going on. And so... Um, I'm passionate that people understand that the, the heart of the gospel is that Jesus has done it all, you know. And so we all come under that covering. We all come under his, what he's kind of 
accomplished through his life and death and resurrection. And so um, I met a lady a while back who, uh, she was telling me this story and basically only her and her husband knew about it. Her, her son had done something and really messed up. And she'd basically hidden it from her pastor, from, her, from all of her, even her best friends, neighbors, everyone. She just shut it behind the doors. And yet, she, so she carried this huge pain and she had no way of actually having help or support or care through it because basically she was scared about what the pastor would think, about how it would look, how it would be perceived. And uh, I don't believe that's what, um, you know, God's kingdom is like. I, I think we, we need to be able to come and that's that's for both of both parties you know we, we need to be receptive when people come to us mm. and, and show compassion mm. and we also need to be able to mm. be real and yeah. confess i think um, I, I have a similar passion to you i think you know that's a sense of authentic mm. community it's great uh, where people you know uh, you know we did when we did go in pretty hard on sin uh, this morning but i think you know in terms of the vulnerability it, you know it just starts it just just letting people know you are just, we've all got needs. Yeah. And that's not, that's not a thing of shame. That's just reality of humanity, reality of doing life together. We do get things wrong. I think even as pastors and leaders here, I think I'm similar to Lou. I think people know that I haven't got it all together. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to be around me very long to know that's the case. And I'm happy to own that, you know, yeah. actually, I, I need, I need others to call me out and cover my weaknesses and that kind of stuff. And I think hopefully there's a, a culture of that and, and where there's, there's still areas we need to work on that. We need to keep working on it. We don't want mm. people having faces and masks or pretending we've got it together. Yeah. And that's not, the people of God are not people who've got it together. They're people who know they haven't. And uh, they wear a mask now during. <laughs> yeah. COVID <laughs> masks. Yeah, yeah. So that's fine. Yeah. I think uh, both of you being uh, senior leaders uh, amongst us, um, what are some of the things that you're thinking about when somebody comes to you and is, is vulnerable and is sharing stuff with you? What, what mm. are you thinking about? Right. I think for me, I'm just thinking, um, I was, it's always a real punch the air moment. Like, thank you, God, we just kicked the, the enemy in the, in the guts mm. because of it. You know, every oh, time someone brings sin out, mm. you're thinking, great, we just dealt the enemy mm. a blow. And uh, often when people bring things up, they're not quick fixes. Mm. They're not. And so I think, oh, I've got the answer. Occasionally I feel like that, but very rarely. It's more like, <laughs> okay, great. Together we can go to God and yeah. we can journey this through and we know it's a journey. And uh, so I think that's my initial thing. I think, and again, humility, just knowing, I think you, you know, you're expressing earlier that you, know, you brought things up and you not felt judged. So, you know, because we, we all know we've been, we've been there. I've had plenty of times so I've had to dig deep and share things and know how that feels. You know, so I've got mm. lots of empathy for people, people who do that. And so, yeah, that's my first thoughts at least. Yeah, I guess, um, you know, we're in relationship, aren't we? And obviously, in this, at the moment, currently, it's very hard to kind of connect with people properly face to face. But I think recognizing that relationship is key in all of it. And so, you know, and also just leading people again to the truth of who God is within the context is really important. Um, again, like you're saying, if people keep things hidden, then that's where the power is. That's yeah, where yeah. They're, it, they're being robbed. The moment people actually bring stuff into the light, yeah. then freedom can come and change can come. And mm. yeah. vulnerability is about, you know, in entering a, an environment that is caring, that is supportive, mm. that is forgiving, that, um, mm. and also is a place for change. You don't have to live like mm -hmm. that anymore. Actually, it's time to see change happen. And so. Yeah. In the verses that you read, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and mm. cleanse us mm. from all unrighteousness. There is power in the confession, isn't Absolutely. it? It's not just, we're not just talking and sharing and getting stuff <laughs> no. off our chest. We believe that there is almost like a Holy Spirit enabled power yeah. that comes upon you and roots sin out, which is, which is yeah. powerful. Um, looking at some of the questions that have come through, I guess one of the... Um, you may or may not have come across stuff in the news about a prominent Christian leader, who another Christian leader, another famous Christian preacher who's, um, who's fallen in sin and whose who's immorality, sexual immorality, uh, stuff has come out. Uh, and I, is this another one of those, you can't practice what you preach. Uh, Christians just say all these right things and then once they're off the camera and once they're in the, behind closed doors, they do something completely different. What would your response be to that? Um, I think it massively grieves me when you see those things happen. I think you're sad for the people who are involved. You know, it's, it's real people. It's not just celebrities at a distance. You know, they're, they're real people whose lives are impacted. And I think that's the first thing, isn't it, I think. But they're also, um, I guess we just alluded to it, we're, 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 not, we're not perfect. If anything, this, this underlines the fact that we, we are every person. 
uh, with real humility, keeps needing the grace of God day mm. by day, yeah. and needs to take, especially some of these, these teachings very, very seriously. We do need each other now. We know you can have accountability. I mean, I've had accountability sometimes and, you know, I've managed to lie to someone for six months about what's actually going on. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So it's not, you know, but, you know, you're thinking, you grow thinking, you know, that's, that's, that's not actually the, the fruitful way. Actually, it's living really honestly. And I think what Lou said about relationship, you know, have you got people who... The relationship is is on such a keel that they can call you out and stuff. Mm. They can talk to you, and I think there is a danger. I think particularly with Christian leadership, you can get above that. Yet too big that way, too big to fall. Like, how do I confess my sin when I'm too big and that kind of stuff? Mm. I'm not saying that's what's happening. This issue, I'm deliberately don't look into these things. I don't want to uh, see the grot. The, the Bible kind of uh, warns us about looking into sin too much. It doesn't do. It's not edifying for you. But we do want to take the warning of it. And I think you know where it does uh, kind of bring fresh conviction or fresh desire to look at our own lives, that can be a good thing. But, mm. yeah. I think it's similar to your story, the, the story of your friend. is It's almost like a, a lie from the enemy that mm. when, oh, there's so much shame on you, there's so much yeah. guilt on you, this is, this is horrible. And then you can live within that lie and then the yeah. lies just go bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger around you when you can break through immediately and say, no, let me just get this out into the light. Yeah. And that takes away the power of the enemy to like, lie to you about mm. what's going on in your life. I guess that's the thing about relationship as well, is it's a, it's a bigger picture than just these moments. There's a whole thing. So when I come to my friends, they know me yeah. as me. They know all the parts. So it's yeah. not just about the ugly bits. Yeah. It's actually that they, they know generally what I'm like and how I view things so they can call me out or they can correct me or they can encourage me or they can cheer me on mm. or whatever it might be. And we pray together. You know, there's power in prayer. Mm. You know, it's not just words, but actually as we pray, as we ask the Holy Spirit to shift things to... Mm. To, as we confess, just as we bring it all to Jesus. God, as we bring it all to yeah. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> you know, I know your song's power. better than you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, one, of, one of the things that you talked about was um, vulnerability for likes, where people mm. say stuff on social media and, and they come clean for stuff, but not wanting it to be challenged and wanting their, their thing to be endorsed. In <laughs> our culture, do you think vulnerability is considered a strength or a weakness? And it seems it's fashionable to be open and honest about some things, but not others. I think even as someone who wears my heart on my sleeve, even that is a managed, expe managed expectation. You know, I think I know that thinking. I'm, I'm saying this thinking, yeah, I'm being vulnerable. I've definitely chosen the lane in which I'm happy to be vulnerable with. You know, there's yeah. a temptation to do that. And I think we've all got that. And I think social media will just, just feed that because I think if you get a like for something, or someone says you're courageous, mm. if you share this and the other, you're thinking, oh, I am courageous. And I'll, say, <laughs> I'll share more. That could be, you know, that's not always the motive. You can't, you know, you don't always know the motives, but occasionally you do think, if you weren't getting the likes for this, if you get people, get, get people disgusted at it or whatever, you might take it down and you might not be that, that kind of thing. So, mm. yeah, there's definitely a fashionableness to it that you want to be aware of, mm. but, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. I think, for me, um, when I'm sharing stuff on social media, I, I'm always kind of... Because I want to be open and real, yeah, and yeah. because I think there's power in that. You know, yeah. people like to see my washing all over the floor and <laughs> my cake that falls apart, or the fact that I've blown it with my kids that day because I've lost the plot, or whatever it might be. No, I know it's hard to believe, <laughs> Johan. Even somebody with a jacket like I this can <laughs> lose the plot. But um, but I think the the thing is the the challenge for me is that I don't want people's sympathy sometimes when I'm sharing it. I just want them to know a reality. Brilliant. But because of the context within stuff you know people care and they yeah, want to respond yeah, and they yeah, want to do yeah. that um, and I think the context online quite often who's getting the glory from what you're posting you mm. know who is yeah, who is the person that that you're that you're directing it to Brilliant. is it so that you receive affirmation or is it actually yeah. because you want to yeah, yeah, yeah. and sometimes it, even if your intent is good the response might not be quite what you wanted, but you've just got to trust God with yeah. that as well. So it's, it's complicated. It is, and yeah, and it's, it's wisdom. You work it out, don't mm. you? Yeah. yeah. No, it's good. I guess this question's on, uh, I'm not a particularly vulnerable... Uh, uh, real question. I'm not a particularly vulnerable person, but I see that as a strength. I don't burden people with my problems. I think I take them to God and I crack on. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I think, I, I think, you know, as we grow in maturity, I think more and more we take our own stuff to God. I think, you know, we keep a shorter account with him and so that, that should be a natural trajectory. Yeah. I think we also need to be careful. I think that John's exact warning is don't fool yourself into thinking you know your heart that well. Mm. That's, his, you know, that's his exact point. Our hearts are deceitful. So you might be very aware of some of the weaknesses in your life and that kind of thing, but actually that's, don't, 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 don't be fooled. Um, and mm. there may be areas you need to just, just bring before others so they can in interrogate you and ask questions. I, I think I definitely remember a time when someone asked me, you know, they asked me some more details about stuff. I was like, why are you asking that? I was like, because like, those are the bits you don't want to share. It's like, yeah. And so, you know, putting yourself in a, in a place where, you know, you can shine some. We are a community 
And, and um, it's like, if I'm vulnerable, but you're not, mm. it's like, well, it just there's a disparity of power of relationship there. And actually, we won't want to be on the same level. Actually, mm. we've all want to be admitted that we, we've got stuff to deal with. And maybe you are in a blessed place where you're not struggling loads right now. Well, mm. still share what you have got because you can draw others out and mobile or something to them mm. as well. Mm. Brilliant. Um, there we go. That's fun. Yeah, it's I think it's more of... Some, for me personally, I can be like, oh yeah, I can share this, I can take this to God and I can confess my sin and ask for forgiveness. And there's no, that's it, it's done. You know, he's forgiven and it's, it's true. Yeah. Yes, there's mm -hmm. grace. But when you talk to somebody else, there's a little bit more of, oh, this is slightly awkward for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does make it real. I mean, God says, you know, you're not made to be alone. You know, you could say, well, Adam, Adam and God could live forever. And God said, no, no, it was good for you to do life with people. Mm -hmm. And it's something God has hardwired into us that we're meant to do life together. And we mustn't move into any sort of private life or private spirituality no no we do them we're meant to do it together there's there's, there's real power there and so uh, you know anyone who meets with me you know there's nowhere they're leaving without an action you know what are you going to do next about what is it you're going to go and read or pray about or do or cut off you know because i think we need people to hold us to those things as well uh, i think yes, some sir. of it's to do with the light you know we're talking about the light and being, things being brought into the light so there are some things you take them to god you know you've dealt with it it's okay but sometimes we kind of say well i've taken it to god so i don't need yeah. to tell anyone else yeah. and yet still it has a bit of a hold on you yeah. it's still kind of not really been brought yeah. into the light so if you really have broken through and you really do want breakthrough you haven't lost anything by going to somebody no, and actually confessing it mm. or telling them or talking to them and you know again that kind of you miss out on yeah. friendship mm. yeah. friendship is about sharing life together and yeah. the high and the lows, the good bits, the bad bits, you know, and so you miss out sometimes by yeah. just withholding all the time. I, I would say if people are watching yeah. and they've got themselves in that place, well, I don't, I don't need to tell anyone else. I would just try and say, well, if you've got yourself to a place where you've convinced yourself you don't need to, then you're probably in a, not, in a great, <laughs> not in a great space, actually, because you want to prove yeah. the fact that Jesus has forgiven you, there's no shame to it. That's true, you can go and tell someone else. And actually, yeah. it's an expression of, I really do trust God with this. Brilliant. You know, actually, there's no shame and no condemnation in him, therefore I can tell someone else. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible, isn't it? On one hand, there is just the comfort that we have with approaching God, and yet He's just this holy, awesome, mm. magnificent God, and we should almost shudder to take us in mm. for Him because it's like, whoa, yeah. I'm coming for a holy God. Mm. But it's the tension we live in, the approachableness yeah. and the unapproachableness of mm. who God is. Yeah. And we thank you for Jesus. Um, I guess a few uh, practical questions. Uh, questions on if someone confesses their sin to me, um, you know, what should I do? What, what should I do if, I'm, if, if someone's con can continuously confessing sin but refusing to change? You know, what would you do in those situations? <laughs> Go to Matthew 18, as we discussed earlier uh, in our series, which is when you see, you know, you see sin that you're challenging. You know, so someone I brought it to you, you bring something, and then they're not doing anything with it. Take some along with you mm. instead. And, uh, you know, just say, hey, look, this is so serious. I wanted to bring someone else into this uh, because I care for you and I care for your soul. I think that's the easiest next step. That's the easiest one that Jesus uh, uh, gives us. Brilliant. Um, there's a question, Lou, maybe you want to pick this up. I have a friend who is a Christian who, dis who, disproves, who disapproves that I started dating a non-Christian and it's affected our friendship. I now don't feel I can confess sin to her because of how judgmental she's become. <laughs> well, that's uh, yeah. Thanks for that one. This is what um, you say. Well, I turn the ins and out of that pastoral situation. Yes. It'd be really great for you to speak to one of our pastors. So that is exactly <laughs> it. I, I, to, to give a um, an answer to something that I don't really know the full story on would be uh, not wise. But that's really but, good. That's a really good point, isn't it? Like you need to work this out in the in the context of relationship. Not you just, do. Yeah. yeah. And and again, if it needs a pastoral input, then yeah, yeah, get absolutely. somebody in to help. Yeah. Yeah. Write that through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got other singers. Yeah. Yeah. Please get in touch if you ask that Stevens question. Stephen's available. Uh, right. I'd love Follow to. Follow Lou on yeah, Instagram. I'd love to. Yeah. Um, do you think vulnerability should look different for men and for women? <laughs> Don't shoot the message. These are the questions Does people it? ask. Uh, um, well, I think the, the vulnerability is about authenticity. So it might be outworked in different ways. Yeah. But it's about an authenticity of being real. And so um, you might, you might, Nathan and I would express our vulnerability very differently. He's an introvert, I'm an extrovert. He tends to think about things deeper. I tend to spill it all out far too quickly. You know, we have different ways of expressing our vulnerability. And so rather than making it male or female, mm. I think it's about authenticity Brilliant. at the centre. That's a great answer. Ah. Ah, <laughs> uh, we've come to the end of Live Runs. Thank you so much, Lou, for joining Thank us. You. Loved having you. Lou, why don't you tell I, us I, about no, your coffee say, morning coming up? Oh, one more thing first. Yes. Um, one thing that I've found yeah. 
uh, within this context is about things like marriages. And this is a practical thing. Yeah. Often people don't raise their hand because they're too ashamed that they might be in trouble. And um, I just want to encourage anyone who's walking that line that today we've heard to bring things into the light is where things can change. So and so I just, I, it's really, it has to be real. You know, there, don't wait until it goes too far. Don't wait until you feel like you can't get out of the pit anymore. Actually, right now is a day where you can say, you know what, I just need help. It's about support, care, change happening as we bring our vulnerabilities. So, Super. Lou, you are such a blessing uh, to church leading <laughs> worship, but getting on with the other areas of ministry you're involved in. So tell us yes. about your coffee morning. <laughs> Funny you should mention that, Steve. Okay, well, on the 6th of March, I am going to be doing a coffee morning with Lou. I've got many special guests with me. We're going to be chatting about life. Uh, I've got different people preaching. I'm going to be sharing some stuff. I've got live worship. Your lovely wife Cheers. is going to be come, yeah. coming and joining us. Uh, so you can get tickets online on loufellingham.com. Fantastic. Oh, I'm not very good at promoting myself. No, you want to promote it, I want you to. It's great. Uh, just to land, what Lou said about marriage is so important. I think we all feel quite passionately about it. If, if that's something you're going to do, really explore, talk to your site leader, talk to your small group leader, get in touch with us, and mm. we would love to help you out. Um, next week, we are carrying on our Relational Wisdom series, so we look forward to seeing you at 10 a.m. for the live service, and then at quarter past 11 for live brunch. See you later. Bye. <laughs>